Rated M for Mature. Hi, I'm AJ Locasio, and on this spoiler-laden episode of Playing Dead, we'll be talking to the lead designers of Walking Dead, Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin. We'll be reviewing episode one and hinting at episode two, right here on Playing Dead. So, hi guys, thank you for being on the show again today. Hey. How's it going? So the episode's out, finally. And, finally. Uh, finally. So you guys have gotten a lot of awesome critical response. You've gotten Editor's Choice Awards, a lot of 9 out of 10s. How does that feel? What has been... Uh... It's nice. <laughs> you don't really make the game thinking about like what review score you're going to get. You just really hope people like the story and like the characters. It's been really fun watching people playing through the game yeah. and just sort of the stuff that they experience as they go through the playthrough and people talking about like, Oh, I was a big asshole to this guy, and I was really right. nice over here. And sort of, oh, what happened when you were playing it? And like seeing people who uh, just a lot, a lot of people on the Telltale forums and on sort of other big gaming sites and on Twitter comparing their different stories as they're playing through. It's been it's been fascinating, and it's been really, really entertaining to watch, actually. Yeah, it's also it's fun to watch people pick up on things that we thought were cool, but we didn't think any, but like we didn't know if people would pick up on or right. not. Like in the game, you can you have this this dark past. Like Lee um, has, was on his way to jail and things like this, and there's a character Carly who comes. Oh, yeah. She knows who you are, You're but she says she's not going to tell anybody, You're and you have to trust her. And then later, you have kind of a snap life. decision whether you're going to save her life or save Doug's life. And I always hope that somebody would just like look over at her and just right. go, "She knows." <laughs> and then I, I read a, uh, like a that was a, verbatim in a forum post, yeah, on someone, like something awful or something like that. It got yeah. down to that point where you had to choose between one of the two, and he said like. I looked over there and said, she knows, and just ran for Doug immediately and just left her to the zombies and then went, ah, that was, I, I did that, that was crazy, so. Did you, did you save Doug? I, I did, I saved Doug, because I thought like, oh, that guy's got no hope, look at her, she's like slender, she's a news oh, reporter, so you're she's probably been in Afghanistan and stuff, That's like, nice. this guy just stands by the door all day, he was screwed, I had to save him, I, I felt this. bad for him. Doug is a good friend of mine. <laughs> I'm wearing this shirt in support of Doug, so I thank you for saving him. Uh, you're for, welcome, and I'm sorry about that. Thanks for boosting Doug's the... stats. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a week ago, we're hanging out with Doug on Sunday. Um, pre and post his stat. I think Doug has like a 28% survival rate or something in games right now, in the yeah. games. So he'll be upset about that. Save Doug. So was there stuff that you guys had originally planned to put in the game or things that you're like, oh, I'd love to do this or, you know, we should try this that didn't quite make it? Maybe. The game originally started and it was you, you were like in your early 20s and you were with your sister, who, Clementine was your sister. There are some ridiculous ones though, like the, the, the mob being involved briefly. <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> I don't think Kirby would have signed there up was, on that. No, there was, there, was, there was a solid like six hours where the mob was chasing you through part of the season. Are there specific choices that will affect future episodes? I mean, there, there's got to be. Obviously, there are just many. in episode one. Well, obviously, the, the stuff that shows up towards the end of the episode, we put that stat sheet up, and those are sort of the top line, like which characters lived and died, who did you side with in the huge arguments of the game. But... Um, beyond those, we're paying attention to most everything. I mean, I think if you actually go under the hood of how the engine works technically, every single thing you say to every single character is tracked and is available to the writers of subsequent episodes to use to flavor your playthrough and to screw you and make you feel like you ruined everything. If you, th if if you were stressed out by the choices in episode one, then like episode two is going to... Because that was sort of like the training ground. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is your crew, get to know everybody. Hi, I'm Lee. You know, it's like, <laughs> but now you're going to make, like, the, the training wheels come off a little bit. Right. And it's really going, like, relationships will be forged uh, in episode two. Oh, good. Yeah, we uh, want this stuff to kind of start with the little things that you say to people that then sort of, like, rolls and rolls over the course of the season until as you, until some stuff is really biting you in the ass in a fun way. So have you guys heard any, uh, any fan reaction, any, any user feedback that you're going to use to affect future episodes? For me, it's like I read stuff that people are saying, oh, I hope this happens, or you know, I hope this character does this. Uh, and I either think to myself, you're going to be stoked when that happens, or, <laughs> or I'm just going to love it when we do the exact opposite of the thing that you want, and just your hopes are entirely dashed in the most aggressive way possible. But like just seeing people sort of try and extrapolate out what's going to happen it, it doesn't necessarily, for me, like rapidly alter the flow of where I would want something to go, but it at least sort of makes you go, all right, well, we know, we know that there's a subset of people who are playing who are going to be in for a treat or who are going to just be like, ah, you know. Uh. So what can you guys tell us about episode two? 
You know, yeah. because episode one is when Rick is in a coma, right. it's very day one zombie apocalypse stuff, but the thing that I liked about the comic books is... It's like it takes place sort of just in the heart of, yeah. like, of post-zombie times. Like, right. second, third trade, you're like, oh, this is never getting better. Okay, I'm in. Once you make that, <laughs> once your brain clicks to that, uh, the comics become, take, like, jump to a new level. So we go straight to there. People are starving. Obviously, Doug or Carly is going to be there. And what does that mean for you in that episode? And what does that mean for you in future episodes, for that matter? Where, where have those threads gone after that two-month time jump? So yeah. what, where would your story be and when, you, when we pick up? Does it scare you, AJ? It does scare me. It scares me a little bit. Does it excite you? Like, I'm talking to, like, what's her name, Katya? I can't even mm-hmm. say that. And I'm just like, oh, crap. If I tell her, like, I have a good day, that she might murder me later and be like, have a good day. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to affect her. I don't know these people that's yet. So Four spoilers. So. Where she murders you and <laughs> screams yeah. have a good day. No, it's terrifying. You didn't that say goodbye is... to me politely on the farm. It's a fork is sticking out of your neck. Like, when you have to choose between two people, it's, oh, crap, I got to choose right now. Like, that's sort of... But just the little mundane things are, uh, you know, yeah. I'm worried that's going to, like, set someone off. And be like, remember that time you said this? It's like, oh, no. So I, I feel like I personally made some bad choices. Uh, is this Well, I mean, awesome? the thing is, the thing that we really set out to design is that there are just bad, of course, good you made bad choices, because there were, I mean, bad cho- yeah, there were no good choices to be made, so all you did was make bad choices. Well, I only oh, made the best choices. Of course you did. Right. But we designed the game to not really, that's, good and bad was sort of a, like a language that wasn't really used. So like a good example is like, with the girl on, in, the, in the motor inn. Right. You go there the first time, you discover there's a girl, Irene, who's been locked up in a, in a room. Uh, Glenn's been trying to save her. You try to save her. You open the door, and she's bitten. And she says, please give me your gun. I got to end this. Like, what did you do? I, I said, shoot yourself. You gave her the gun? I was like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the stuff that's all really interesting to us. Like, there are no wrong choices. So to watch, most of those are 50-50, and then there's the Doug Carly. Yeah. Yeah, there were some that were pretty split. extreme, because most of them, yeah, they were split yeah, down like, the middle. It, I was like, ooh, nobody likes Doug. The, <laughs> the Irene one, I think, is a, is a pretty decent example, because once the door opens and someone who's bit shows up, like, there's... There's not a good way out of that. Yeah, I mean, her being bit... You're you not know, going you to inject her with zombie yeah, cures. You know, right. She's like, not going to join your crew and go off to have many great adventures. It's more, what does this mean for my story experience? Right. What sort of baggage do I have to carry with me? You know, emotionally so. And, and that's... Just, just offer. That's cool, you know. <laughs> that's I feel like so many games... That's a choice. Like, have, ...are about choice. And they're great games, don't get me wrong. But when their choices have to mean something cold and mathematic to matter in that world you don't really get interesting choices when our dis- when our choices are about like the emotional baggage that's going to come with you and what looking backwards when you're in the fifth episode and you're like god i did just let that girl off herself you know that you can you can just do more interesting things and you don't have to worry about like well what is this going to do to my stat sheet right. like obviously you, you have you can see how you compare at the end we do have, we offer you stats it's more how do you compare we're not, we're not making judgment calls so something I just I really like about the game, and just kind of get back to like the creative freedom there is to when you're all making a game, then everybody's on the same page, is the the little details that get put in. Just are, like I don't even know who that was, but in the motor in at the end when it was, just in, a, it was bodies, just in a review. In a review, somebody was like, "Oh, it'd be really good if that girl who killed herself was in that pile of bodies." Yeah, we had the shot of, of yeah. Lily when when your crew at the end of the episode is clearing out the motor in, and then you just see the the pile of yeah of zombie corpses. We said, "Oh well, clearly." It's gross, but they would have had to do something with Irene's body, so yeah. throw her in there. So. And it's one of those things, depending on what choice you made there, you probably feel differently about seeing her face. That was it's a, cool whenever we can find ways to make story choice, give you story choice options that then sort of leave a thumbprint on the world like that. You know, a body here, a broken thing here. So when I was playing the game, I mean, there was a lot of violence. The babysitter with the hammer. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to start strong. Yeah, you, you did. It was a little like, oh, I'll, I guess I'll do it again. <laughs> well, I have no choice. You didn't have to. to. You, you did have a choice. You <laughs> did actually, I? You oh, actually, yeah. I, you, I went for you it. You actually only have to hit the babysitter until she stops moving. Yeah. Well, I kept going. Which is, I think, the second hit. You don't, and then you don't get the... You like, don't get to see the... the, the hammer yeah, it got stuck, and I was so it yeah. screwed me up. Yeah. Like, I was just laying in bed again, like, staring up at the ceiling. So, are we going to see more <laughs> stuff like that? Is it going to get worse? Is yeah, I mean, get... you know, we definitely... It's going to be different, and it's going to be intense, you know, like... We've said many times that this this story isn't really about the zombies; it's about the people. So, like, but it's about the things that people do. Zombies are like pinatas sometimes. (laughs) Like, you know, you can just kill them no problem. They're filled with candy. It's when the violence hits. I mean, the first two zombies you see in the game, obviously, that's different. But like, by the time you're, you are two months into the game, and our characters are three months into their lives of of the the apocalypse, like, 
it's the violence around people and what people do to each other that's really upsetting. So we've got some questions from our players, and uh, Tommy here asks, will there be a second season of The Walking Dead? And if so, will choices made in the first season matter in the second? Man, uh, we <laughs> don't know. We don't know. We, don't, we have nothing to announce. We'd It'd be to, cool. We'd love to do more stuff, but right now... I can right tell you now... guaranteed I won't write a story that couldn't be a second season. Okay, so Jake... Oh, look, you sent in a question. <laughs> what? In oh. the first four minutes of gameplay, the police officer talks about a man he previously drove. Was he referring to Thomas Richards from the comic book? Who's to say? And that's the guy with the, the glasses. Yeah. Who, who's the serial killer in the, in the com... In the... Good pickup. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, good so yes, yeah. Yeah. Jake. Yeah, good pickup. So uh, our friend Tiered, I really hope I said that right, I'm so sorry, uh, asked the really long question. Am I right in believing that there was more to the scene where the zombies were attracted to the TVs during the puzzle to get the keys for the pharmacy? Was it Romero-esque social commentary? Or, I'm, am, <laughs> or am I just a loon with too much time on his hands? If I'm right, will we see scenes like this more often? Oh, the TV's turning on and all the zombies congregating around the TV? Yeah. We talked about, about it looking like it was that. That wasn't the intent of the talk, scene. We didn't, we didn't design it to be that, but when we saw it... When we saw it, we went... We went oh, yeah. Oh, we people did. social commentary. It didn't start off as pointed social commentary. But is it? Choice matters. <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you guys for being on the show today. It's awesome. Always yes, good. it is. Thanks for Saturday having us. Episode or two. whatever. Hope you guys are I'm too. ruining it now. Remember to email your questions to playingdead at telltalegames.com or call 707-701-DEAD. Be sure to sign up for the official website or follow us on Facebook or Twitter to be the first one to find out when the next episode of Playing Dead goes live. So combine... Combine Overwatch asks. That's Combine Overwatch. It's from Half-Life. Half yeah. yeah. You video game nerds.